you will work with me tonight, I want to go back to the book of Acts in that 12th chapter. I'm going to try to finish out that last part of praying without prayer without ceasing. Our theme is um, the power in prayer. Say that, the power in prayer. So I'm going to continue on with that um, within Acts, the uh, 12th chapter, and we're going to go from verse 12 to verse 17. I'm going to kind of walk it slow. I'm asking God to give revelation in this little storyline of Peter and see what we can pull out of it as we, we go along um, and see what he is, is saying to us. Pray, pray, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Let's look at this in the New King James reading. Our King James is close to it. If you have a different translation, it might even be brighter. So when he had considered this, Peter, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, um, where many were gathered together praying. In verse 13 of Acts 12, uh, he says, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a, little, a girl named Rhoda came and answered, and when she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is Peter's angel. It is his angel, it's not Peter. When Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and they saw him, they were astonished, but motioning with them to them with his hands to keep silent. He declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, go tell those things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went another place, and went another place. Pray, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing. Last week, as we were ending this, to catch a few of you up, if you remember it, we, we talked in that first part of that um, 12th chapter, around, around verse 8 down, um, we, we talked about the supernatural power of Peter being delivered from this imprisonment and connected it to a lot of our vices and things that we get ourselves caught up in and how God can bring us out of those. In the context of this Acts, this 12th chapter, remember we talked about the light shining into the prison the light that came and this light that Paul speaks about as John speaks about the light in John's gospel, the, the, the first chapter, St. John, the first chapter, he said the light shined in darkness and the darkness could not comprehend it, it did not apprehend it. But Paul speaks about this light in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, he says, the light that shines also in our hearts, giving us a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the dark as the prison was and dark as our prison was, the light broke into us and gave us knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, you would be frustrated coming to church for years and years and years and never let that light shine in you, which is the light of the Lord. You are the light of the world, the light of the Holy Spirit. It comes into your heart. Paul says again in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, giving you a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter also in his context of last week talks about the angel that led Peter out of the prison. Peter here now instantly obeys the angel when he came to him and said, get up, Peter, it's time to get out. He began to walk. The reason a lot of people stay in misery love company, because they don't want to walk out. And God has given you an exit to get out. But you keep changing, getting the iPhone 15 and giving them that number. But you, you got, once God gets you out, don't, don't go back. Keep walking forward. Amen? Notice Peter didn't walk back into the jail. He walked out of the jail. The gates, as he was walking, began to swing open. Somebody said the gates swung open. We talked about. It's amazing to me. We're going to pick it up later in the story. How, in this instant, the angel was leading, and Peter was following, and the gates were swinging open. There's certain things in our lives that we come to, and blessings that God just swings them right open. But there's other things you come to, you got to knock, and you got to believe God that this is what He had promised for you to give access into that. The gates are swinging over, but Peter left those chains, chains in the bondage of chains in the cell, and he committed to walk out, leaving that stuff behind him. Peter here is a perfect assurance when he says in Acts 12 and 11, 
You can read it if you want to. But Peter has this perfect assurance. He says, now I know without doubt. I'm reading, reading from the new NIV. He says, now I know without doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's cruel uh, uh, clutches or his vices, uh, his cruel intentions. And it says, and from everything that the Jewish people were hoping would happen. I'm reading from the new um, um, NIV. But God had rescued Peter, and he says, I know now that this was nothing but God that got me out of this one. Can, can I just get two people to say, oh, I know that one was God right there. God got me out of that one. You know, no, I, there was no way I was going to get out of this IRS debt but a God move. And God just shipped that thing around and got me out, got us out of that one. The clutches of Herod, because remember Peter was on death row, and the assignment was to kill him in the morning, one night to live, one night to live, to kill him in the morning, so God came and rescued him. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, again, is the earnest, fervent prayer. Earnest, fervent prayer. Prayer gets hot. The more you think about it, it just gets hotter. Praying earnestly. The earnest prayer is seen in James 5 and 16, and there again, he says, it's powerful and effective. Another translation says that it produces wonderful results. I'm reading from the NIV translate, New Living Translation, NIV translation of James 5 and 16. This prayer of the righteous person, not of my righteousness, but because I'm him in him who is righteous. Christ is my righteousness, and I'm in agreement and alignment with him. Therefore, my, my prayer becomes powerful and effective. You may not think it, but your smallest prayer can open another door. Amen? Producing wonderful results. Now, the text tonight in Acts 12 and 12. Look closely at it. I'm going to paraphrase through it, but that's where we're starting at tonight. Uh, the conscience of Peter, now I know that God has opened this door, and he feels the freedom that he's outside, and he starts walking in the streets, but he know he can't stay in the streets because if they know he got out, Herod's going to try to get him back. Um, Herod is a type of the enemy or the devil or the adversary. Once he knows you got out, you can't stay out there in the streets. You got to get back and get yourself to the house of God or to a safe place where you don't you know, find yourself vulnerable for the enemy again. So if you're out, don't stay out there. If you're coming out, come all the way out. Don't just come halfway out. Don't, don't straddle the fence. If you're going to come to Jesus, come to Jesus. The best thing you can do for your life. Amen? So Peter decided to go to the lady's house named Mary, uh, who was the mother of John, whose surname. I, I didn't know not much about surname until I started traveling international. And they, I'm on the plane when Mary and I are going to get off. They said, you got to fill out this documentation. They said, put in your surname. I said, well, my name is Clinton, sir. They said, no. Your surname is your last name. Y'all know that already, but I, I didn't know that. So anyway, so here it is. John Mark is the, is the person that he is speaking of. And they're gathering at Mary's house for prayer. Peter, no doubt, believing that if I get to Mary's house, I know somebody's down there is praying. No doubt praying for my release, but if nothing else, prayer will be going on in that house. Peter now goes to visit the house, and he moves towards that, and he comes to, to the place where we today understand that the answer can be at the door, but you don't even know it's there. Someone told me a couple of days ago they had the answer in March, but didn't go check it again until later in the year. You have to check the door every now and then and go back and ask the Lord, is this the day? Is this the moment? Y'all getting cold out there. Look, I see y'all going under. Okay, turn it back off. Get them hot again. Um, uh, you have to check the door every now and then. Check what you've been praying for. Check what you've been looking for. How often do you go, I'm, I'm just putting it a plain and, and simple, but I want you to grasp it. How often do you go to your bank account and just look for, like, I expect extra money to be in here? Yeah. Maybe, maybe y'all don't, but I'm, I'm looking for, for somebody because I'm paying these fees. I'm looking for some type of return. I don't, if I can just get a dollar return on these fees, and I know that that door is opening. Something's about to come back. Check the door. I need five people to say, check the door. Check the door. Acts 12, 13, track with me. NIV, Peter knocked at, the, at, knocked at the outer entrance, and the servant named Rhoda came and answered the door. Now, 
in the Orient or in some even places now, you have a gate to come before you come into the courtyard, then you have the door. It's, it's another level of security. It's, um, uh, Jesus was at the outer door, and when he's at the gate, he had to come through into the courtyard, then he goes to the door. You know, um, um, I'm gonna put it like this. How many of you live in Los Angeles? Good, okay, we had a screen door. Then we had the door. Oh, y'all ain't keeping up with me in this lesson. <laughs> I need some protection before you get to the door. You know, okay, well, God bless y'all, and y'all, Beverly Hills neighborhoods carrying on, but as soon as I moved in the house, I put up a, a, a door, a security door, and, and put locks on everything. And another story, another time, the guy still came and broke in. But the answer was at the door. Peter was knocking. Rhoda came. I want you to see Matthew write this down, 7 and 7, and some of you need to get this. He says in the NIV again, ask and it will be given. You. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door, I'm reading from the NIV, I'm saying, it's not going to shall be open to you, but the NIV says, knock and the door will be open to you. Now, this is my running moment right here. Because I've been asking, I've been seeking, seeking, but tonight, I'm knocking. And the more I knock, that door is going to open. The more I persistently stay at that door, what I'm asking God for, my Bible says, it shall be open to you, or the door will open to you if you knock. The reason some of you ain't got nothing, you ain't asking, you're not seeking, and your show ain't knocking. If you start knocking, that door will open. By faith, we ask and we receive. By faith, we seek and we find. By faith, we knock and the door is open. Access granted. I need five people to say access granted. He said, and the way is made because I asked, I seeked, and I knocked, and the door is open. Knocking at the door typically means that someone is requesting an entrance and they're trying to get the attention of the person inside. This is uh, the case in a Peter knocking, trying to gain access into the house where prayer was being made for his release. So he's there knocking. The promise was outside, knocking, trying to get in, pray without ceasing. It, it, it was always customary uh, to know the individual that was, at, the person that was at the door knocking. If you knew the person was at the door knocking in the Jewish setting of this Old Testament picture, the gate, the doorkeeper would announce to the house, to the owner of the house, that someone's at the door. Um, Peter is the promise, knocking at the door. The gatekeeper is the Holy Spirit, and he wants the person on the inside to know your blessings at the door. Now, you have to do something about that. Rhoda was excited in verse 13 of Acts 12, and the girl Rhoda means Rose. Her name, she was a servant girl, Acts 12, 13. Her name was Rhoda, and she was a servant girl. And she heard the knocking and came to the door. Faith is a servant to us. Faith goes and do what you tell it to do. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By faith, I don't I already have it. Hope, I expect it. But by faith, I already got it. So faith, go get it for me. And faith brings it to the door and say, it's here. But I don't believe it because it's a manifestation of that faith that I've not seen yet. But by faith, I already have it. Oh, my God. Rhoda is serving at the door. I wondered in the text that why would nobody else hear the door? Maybe that was her job and responsibility as a servant of faith. You keep the door. Everybody else was in the house praying. She goes to the door. Now, she says, I'm not opening the door yet, but Peter is knocking. She got up to open the door physically. I'm paraphrasing Acts 12, 13. And she opened also the door spiritually. You must open the door physically, but you must also open the door spiritually. Open also your heart and your mind to give access to what you've been praying for by faith. If I don't see it physically yet, spiritually, I already got it. I'm already walking towards what God has promised me. Every now and then, you got to check the door. Keep up. I'll get it back to you again. You have to... Check the door. I've been asking for this, Lord, but I'm going to go and check the door. This story is so significant, and it has so much insight to us, to, us, to me, to the power in prayer and, and, the, and how it's so uh, valuable and vi uh, uh, needful to be consistent and praying without ceasing. Peter, here, as you look at the backdrop again, had been on death row. Um, he had been kept by uh, 16 soldiers. Four at a time was watching him. 
chain between two soldiers. So with all possibility, there was no way Peter was getting out of this. Look at somebody say, I've been in one of those before. I've been in one of those. Before. With all possibilities, there was no way he was getting out of this. Yet the story shows us God's resources are greater than our expectation. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. No problem too hard for God to solve. I need you to put that in the atmosphere tonight. I'm working you. Say, there's no problem too hard for God to solve. That one too. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Acts 12, 14. Work with me. I, I, I don't know if it's on the screen or not. On scriptures are going up, but some of y'all know all this Bible. Y'all ain't turned to nothing yet. So um, Rhoda came to open the door. You see it in Acts 12, 14? Not knowing who was but when not knowing who it was, but when she heard Peter's voice, she was filled with excitement. She ran back into the house and interrupted the prayer meeting. Now you gotta walk with me, I'm almost done with this. She hears somebody knocking. I think it's somebody I may know because they're at Mary's house. Not knowing it was Peter, but she heard his voice. When she heard his voice, she was filled with a level of excitement. So she runs to interrupt the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what faith does. Faith will interrupt you while you're in the middle of begging and hoping to get. Faith will come and say, your answer is at the door. Knocking at the door, but you have to get up and answer the door. I don't use it often, but this thing called DoorDash. Okay, you're working with me. And when you call DoorDash, there's an app on there, or Uber Eats, you say, do you want to leave it at the door, or do you want them to knock on the door? I've seen people leave it at the door, and I've seen people knock on the door. The problem is that not you're going to get, not going to get what you asked for, is that you have to decide to get up and make a decision and make a commitment. I want to get my order, either leave it at the door or knock on the door. But for me to say, I don't know what I want to do, just ride it around until I, until I find out what I want to do, you're not going to get nothing. But you have to make a decision tonight in the name of Jesus to say, God, leave it at the door or knock on the door. In this case, I'm knocking on your door. Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda uh, told them that Peter was standing outside. And, and, and for a long time, his persistency, their persistency in prayer was finally answered by Peter knocking on the door. Rhoda did not see him. No, I didn't see him. But actually, I heard his voice. I've heard a lot of preachers. One thing I do know, I know how's his voice. I know Peter's voice. Peter's that guy that preached at Pentecost. Peter's that guy that preached to the Samaritans. Peter's that guy that preached in Cornelia's house. I know that preaching Peter because he hung out with us a little while. But now he's in a difficult place, but I know his voice. I remember his voice because he visited this house from time to time. Rhoda was overpowered with this joy and excitement and celebration. And the disciples looked and said, girl, you crazy. Verse 15, Acts 12. Girl, you didn't lost your mind. You beside yourself. Have you ever prayed for something from God? And somebody come telling you, it ain't that. It ain't that. God ain't doing that. They don't understand if you didn't see it, but you heard it. And I feel tonight in my spirit, somebody's hearing something in your spirit tonight. You don't see it yet, but that check is coming in your spirit. I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me, and I cannot keep silent. I insist that this is what God told me. You don't see that. I ain't got to see it to believe it, but I got to believe to see it. And I trust God to what I'm hearing in my spirit tonight. She was determined. I know it's Peter. Y'all calling me, telling me I'm crazy. I'm beside myself, Acts 12, 15. I may be beside myself, but I'm about to exceed this miracle, walk through this door. This is the season in your life that you got to get a little indignant and crazy. If God is telling you it's going to happen, then you need to be in advance with excitement and celebration and look at the door. Don't get up every morning looking for the bill man. Get up every morning looking for the blessed man. If God can send a bill, he can also send a blessing I'm expecting something in my door 
old saints back in the day, they would go to the mailbox humming a song and get to the mailbox and know they ain't worked all week. But believe when they get to that mailbox, there's a check coming out this mailbox. I seen Big Mama do it so many times. That this woman don't know how this check got in the mailbox, but God's going to bring me what I need. It's your faith that's going to shift your whole life. It's your prayer that's going to bring you to a whole nother level. You don't need to live another day in sadness when God got all this gladness he wants to give to you and joy is coming in your morning. Rhoda, you crazy, but I heard his voice and I believe what I heard and I know that's Peter. So tonight I hear a miracle knocking at your door. Tonight I hear DoorDash coming. I hear the door open. Tonight I believe the gates are going to swing open. Hallelujah. The thing that was closed before you is too close now. God's been watching you pray and watching you stay consistent, watching you believe him every step of the way. Now it's at your door. And don't let anybody talk down your blessing to you when it's come too close to you. She said, they said, girl, it's not Acts 12, 15. It's not Peter. It's his angel. Now I'm going to take you deep just for a moment. I'll bring you back out of that. Perhaps uh, uh, what you heard knocking at the door was Peter's angel. The Jews believed that we all, we, they all had guardian angels. I believe the same, that God watches over us by angelical beings. Pastor Hazel, why would you say that? Read um, Hebrews 1 and 14. Angels are ministering spirits, and they go and do God's bidding. And, and sometimes, have I ever seen an angel? No. Some say they have, but I'm just glad I got a ministering angel to come and minister and strengthen us. Amen. Hebrews 1 and 14. They believed that they had, that it was a guardian angels for all of them. That's what Rhoda was probably hearing knocking at the door. Uh, track this with me. Um, Rhoda is not Peter, it's his angel. And that's probably what you heard at the door. And think about this. These people have been praying without ceasing for so long, they prayed up an angel. It's in the Bible, right? <laughs> they prayed an angel up to come and they said, well, no, but they, the angel had already gone. It was Peter, really. But they believed that it was angels standing at the door, and it was Peter's angel. Even if that was the case, they didn't even get up to go open the door to see who it was. You got a blessing. You got a blessing at the door, and you come to church every Sunday. I don't know what's going on. You walk out your house, pass your blessing, walk in the church, Pass your blessing and going back home in your house, pass, you better stop and check the door, girl. Your blessing is at. Peter, continue knocking, Acts 12, 16. And when they finally got up and opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Hmm. Please. Note for me, the angel that led Peter out through gates and moved him out into the streets, the angel. But now Peter is standing at a door. I've gone through one blockage, now I'm at the next blockage. The enemy is trying to block your blessing, but now it's at the door. Peter is there knocking. Your promise is wanting to come in. Jesus says it like this in Revelations 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and open, I will come in and I will share a meal with you. I want to get into your space, but you got to get up and open the door. Peter was knocking. They were astonished. They were amazed. They were totally dumbfounded. They wowed out. They didn't understand what to do, struck with awe because Peter, that they've been praying for, was standing at the door. Joy overwhelmed them. They could not contain themselves because what they've been praying for, now they see it. You don't ever come to church and hold back your praise. When God has done something for you, nobody else knows what you've been praying for. Come in this door and act like I got my blessing this week. My miracle came in a way I never expected. Peter motion, hold on, calm down. Be silent. I ain't got time to be here too long. I know you're excited to see me, but I got some way to go. There are prayers being answered tonight. Peter is standing at the door inside the threshold of your house. 
where the place of prayer had been taking place. Peter is calming them down, putting his hands out and saying, hold on, I got more to do here. Peter is now released and the miracle is taking place. He beckons them. He said, remember, I was in prison, but now I'm out of prison. God has done an amazing thing, bringing me out of these soldiers' clutches, out of Heron's clutches. He says, I want y'all to go tell James. I said, James was the one that was the martyr. No, not that James. James, the brother of Jesus. James was in town keeping the church while the apostles was going out, scattered throughout the whole world. Go tell James his prayers have been answered. Every now and then, you have to send your testimony ahead of you and tell somebody, go tell them back down at mountaintop, I'm still alive. The enemy tried his best to destroy my life, but I got a testimony that I'm still alive. Tell James, Jesus' brother, that what he prayed for has now happened in my life. Tell James what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for my good. Tell James, prayer still works. Prayer still open doors. Prayer still can bring me out. And if James don't hear it all, tell the rest of the brethren that God has done something amazing. Testify among yourselves how God has brought me out. The only way you can testify, you have to pass the test. And if anybody hears your testimony, and hear about what you came out of, they would praise God for you. Because they know that no one could have got you out of that. Look at somebody say, go tell everybody where I was, I'm not there anymore. The miracle has happened. Change is taking place. Pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for my children. Pray for me that God will keep me strong. Pray that my faith don't fail. Pray that I keep going on. Pray that I get more anointed. Pray that the fire keep burning. Pray that the anointed destroys you. Pray. Look at somebody say, if you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. If you pray, prayer will change the whole story. Hallelujah. I gotta close with this proclamation. Say, I decree divine interruption. Rhoda, walk in, break up the prayer meeting. I decree interruptions while I'm asking God for anything. I decree interruptions while I'm seeking. I decree interruptions while I'm knocking. God just told me to tell somebody while you're knocking I'll interrupt the knock I'll step in the door and give you what you desire but you gotta tell me y'all ain't knocking tonight you ain't knocking there you go but you gotta knock and expect God to open that door I feel a prophetic move of God in this church tonight while you're knocking God I'm opening a door for you how do you know that, Pastor House? Say, I decree. Isaiah 65 and 24. And it shall come to pass that before you call, before you call, I will answer. You ain't catching this. God said, before it comes out your mouth, I'm going to answer. Don't let it come out. I'll wow you. You will be blown away. Before you call, I will answer. And while you are yet speaking, say it back to me. While you are yet speaking, I will hear you in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, do it for us tonight. I give you permission. Interrupt us. Help us break into the service. Heal us, strengthen us, don't let us miss your voice. Help us to be door attentive, prayer attentive, knocking in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I decree a prophetic knock, a prophetic knock 
a pathetic knock a door is opening in my mind in my spirit and in my heart what I've asked God for it shall come to pass Look, somebody sit down when you pray tell somebody when you pray things happen tell them when you pray things happen in Jesus name give God a praise in the house who here has a doormat in front of your front door go home tonight and pick it up I'm just telling you what God told me look up under he told me to go look up on his doormat. Might be something up under here. Yeah. Look at somebody say, you've been walking over too much money. Too many blessings. Too many miracles. Come on, worship God with me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I will keep praying. I will keep asking. I will keep seeking. And I will keep knocking. I hold his hands up. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, lead me to a bigger door. I've been knocking on this little closet long enough. Now lead me to a bigger door, to a bigger knock, to a greater opening. Oh my God. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Am I, am I hollering to anybody tonight? Stretch out and get some room. Say, my door is big. My door is big. I expect big things from God. Big, big things from God. Bless them. God bless you. Be seated for a moment. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, let me minister to you quickly. And you need Christ in your life and you want him to go online, put in the chat that I want somebody to pray for me. I'm expecting God to do some amazing things and I'm coming to him as I am. But if you're here tonight and you just need prayer, heads bow quickly. Whatever it is, quickly, just if you just need prayer, Lift your hands and say, Pastor, I was praying for me tonight. I love the word. I thank God for being in the house, but I'm dealing with my own things tonight. Keep that hand up quickly. Heads bowed. Father, hands are up. Hearts are raised towards you. And I know that you know every heart and every need and every door that needs to be open for your people. Grant it for her. Grant it for him. Grant it for them. Grant it for us. You strengthen tonight, Father, because that's what you do. You strengthen. Increase my faith. Let me not get weary if I can't talk, if I can't ask, I can knock. I can persistently just knock on heaven's door. Now, Father, save, heal, strengthen, and deliver. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give yourselves a hand tonight. God bless you.